active when there is a relative motion between two objects that means uh, both the objects may be in motion or uh, one object may be moving on the surface of other object in such a case in such a case what we are saying there exists some opposite force to the motion like i'll go with one example it will be clear to you so i am taking one surface over here I'll, I'll take surface over here on the surface so as it is a surface i have to indicate with these marks so that uh, looks like there is a surface now no on this i am considering some object over here there is an object over here okay now this object is applied by some force if it is not applied by some force what are the forces acts and these uh, and these objects as usual so one force will act downwards okay one force always acts upwards this is general okay this we have uh, seen in the last class also right so two forces definitely acts on it now uh, what i am doing i am applying some force in this particular direction okay these are the things which we have this we call it as a normal reaction force right normal reaction force i called this we call it as the weight of the object acts downwards this is a normal reaction force can be represented with capital r or capital m and this is applied force i am taking it as some p p is our applied force that means i am pulling it okay now when there is a applied force when this applied force is trying to move this object in this particular forward direction there at the contact parallel to the applied force or parallel to the surface there acts some force at this particular place okay so this up uh, this force which is coming into play when there is an applied force this force acts at contact only and which is acting which is acting opposite to the direction of a, right so which is acting opposite to the direction of a applied force this particular force we are calling it as frictional force frictional force is always acting opposite to the direction of a applied force okay so this is a applied force direction and this is a frictional force direction so frictional force is always acting opposite to the direction of applied force and where it acts it acts at the contact okay so it is acting at the contact of the surface and the object so when it comes when there is a relative motion between two objects so here two objects are what this is a object and this is the other one surface okay so when there is a relative motion between two objects there exists some opposite or resistive force between the two surfaces in opposite to the direction of applied force okay now if there is no applied force acting okay if there is no applied force acting there won't be any frictional force if no applied force means frictional force becomes a zero okay and if here we will come with three things okay now so frictional force is what it opposes it trying to oppose the motion or it resists the motion of the object okay so it doesn't mean that it completely opposes sometimes friction only helps us in moving objects okay so that examples also we will see clearly right now so in this there exists three types of frictions one is one is static friction static friction next second one is limiting friction limiting friction okay next one is kinetic or dynamic friction kinetic or dynamic friction we say okay now so again in these types will be there kinetic or dynamic that we will see further static what does word static means it means rest right so static friction is what when the object is at rest this friction will come into play that means how exactly it will be we will see same example i'll take so this object is there so it is at rest that means i am applying force but still it is not moving so in such a case when even though we are applying force if the object does not move so applied force is there means definitely frictional force is there 
so i am applying some around 10 newtons of force i am applying but the object is not moving that means that much of resistive force is applied by this friction so frictional force is also 10 newtons and still i am increasing it i am increasing it to some 12 newtons so what happens the object is not moving still that means frictional force is increased to 12 newtons still i am increasing i am increasing to 15 newtons still also the object is not moving that means frictional force again it became 15 newtons okay so for 20 newtons the object is started moving then there is no static friction comes because uh, the object is uh, about to move okay so this 20 newtons is our limiting friction okay i am speaking for an example huh? this is not for all the cases for this example whatever i am explaining further 20 newtons is our limiting friction so at uh, we are increasing and we have given some maximum value 20 newtons now that means the maximum value of static friction value we call it as a limiting friction okay the maximum value of the maximum value of a static friction value we are calling it as a limiting friction now now what we are doing we are trying to apply this force continuously and the object is in trying to trying to be in motion now 20 newtons i applied now i don't need to apply 20 newtons again when the object is in motion if i apply 90 newtons also the object will be in motion okay so the object will be in motion then i can apply only 90 newtons so that it will continue to be in motion so whatever 90 newtons i have here that 90 newtons is our applied force when it is in trying to be in motion but even though the object is in motion there exists some amount of friction between the surfaces so such force this whatever 90 newtons we are having here that 90 newtons is our kinetic or dynamic friction value okay so static friction value is what is happening to static friction value it is continuously increasing as the applied force is increasing unless the object is in motion the static friction value is increasing once the object is trying to move whatever maximum value of static friction we have that maximum value of static friction value we are calling it as limiting friction value it is limiting the static friction value okay next kinetic friction kinetic friction is what when the object is in motion that time whatever friction we have that we are calling it as a kinetic friction value right so kinetic friction is what when the object is in motion whatever frictional force whatever resisting force is acting between the between the two surfaces that we are calling it as a kinetic friction value okay so that is about the three types of uh, frictions which we have and here this friction whatever frictional force we have frictional force depends on frictional force directly proportional to the normal reaction force how much ever normal reaction force will be there on that it will depend and if we remove this proportionality constant we will get some constant mu into r this i am writing generally okay so this is our frictional force expression whatever mu we are getting over here whatever mu we are getting over here that mu we call it as a frictional coefficient okay frictional coefficient we call it. when the object when we are speaking about static friction so what happens this f becomes so whatever f we have written so this f becomes f is equals to f is equals to we write it as a f is equals to mu s into r we will be writing okay mu s into r so whatever mu s we got here that what we call it is static frictional coefficient we call so what is mu mu is a coefficient of friction we can call or frictional coefficient coefficient of friction okay so coefficient of friction means so how much friction will be there in between those surfaces can be set with this coefficient okay if this coefficient is more that means there exists more friction between the two objects okay so this is this plays key role now so this constant will be given usually when we are solving problems so that we will find out how much friction is lying there okay if we if they are asking us to calculate friction frictional coefficient only mu only if they ask us to calculate so what do we do mu is equals to f by r we will write okay 
so but generally they won't give f no so how to find f value so if you want to find that f value what do we do so how much ever applied force is there that much will be our frictional force so that only we will take over here okay that we will solve right that is how we will be calculating coefficient of friction okay and uh, if it is a static friction we will write mu s into r okay if it is limiting friction what do we write this mu maximum will write mu s maximum that means uh, static frictional maximum value only we call it as limiting friction we won't write it as mu l okay this we won't write so mu maximum or mu s maximum we will write as the limiting friction value and other one kinetic friction means mu k okay f this is fs so fk is equals to what do we write mu k into r we will be writing okay so this is the expression for kinetic friction okay so kinetic friction we got and static friction we got expression for both of them we got right so we'll see a graph for this then we will have more clarity on this how these three frictions are existing and in this kinetic friction we will have two more types of sliding friction and rolling friction that also i'll explain when once we go with this graphical part okay so that, that is about three kinds of friction whatever we have here 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 uh, we have a graph between applied force and frictional force uh, just now we discussed about three kinds of friction uh, frictions uh, like uh, static friction limiting friction and kinetic friction now so same example uh, just remember the same example i'll go back once so initially i am applying force on it the object is not moving so when i am increasing the force the static frictional force also increasing gradually and when i reached certain maximum value then the object started moving so even though i applied some less, less amount also the object is in motion right so the same example i am uh, taking with the one graph over here so what is happening i am applying the force the applied force i am gradually increasing what is happening the frictional force also gradually increasing right so frictional force is increasing gradually uh, with respect to applied force so increasing increasing so here it reached maximum value right so here nothing but here, the example whatever we have taken there there 20 newtons was there no here uh, that value reached it means okay so here the value is maximum okay the frictional force value is maximum this we call it as fx maximum here they have given in the graph fl but we have to take it as fs maximum okay so here it reached fs maximum after reaching maximum value of friction then we don't need to apply that much maximum if we apply less force also the object will continue to move, continue to be in motion okay so in this range when o to a range so whatever we have got so o to a is what whatever force we got is static friction o to a is static friction and a to b whatever a to b are directly a also a point also we can take only one value it will be there and b to c three regions are there those three regions is representing three kinds of forces whatever we have here okay so this is what static friction value okay and this is what limiting friction value okay next this is what kinetic friction value okay so that these lines are indicating these particular frictions okay in kinetic friction in kinetic friction again we will be having here i have to mention one more point this is static friction whatever is there static friction has adjusting nature so which which force has adjusting nature if they ask which force it will be there static frictional force is having adjusting nature okay so adjusting nature is possessed by static friction that means as we are applying force static friction also changing it is adjusting according to applied force that's why we are calling it as adjusting force also we will call okay static force is having adjusting nature okay and here in kinetic friction we have two type other types of frictions that is sliding friction and rolling friction okay sliding friction and rolling friction so out of all the frictions rolling friction value is very less okay 
rolling friction value will be less okay here one more point we have to uh, keep in mind if frictional force if if, if 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 frictional force is less if frictional force is less then our motion will be smoother means motion it will be fast okay so if if frictional force is a little high that means motion becomes a little difficult okay and one more important point i said again i am re reminding here friction it always it won't oppose the motion okay so it many cases friction opposes the motion in other cases friction helps us to move smoothly also okay like i'll give example before uh, let me complete this sliding friction is what when i am having one object when i am trying to drag that object like a same example in the previous case whatever i have taken over here the box which i have taken here if i pull it what happens it is a sliding on this okay so whatever friction i am getting here is called when the object is in motion in the kinetic friction the type of kinetic friction which is acting here is a sliding friction if i put some two two wheels over here if i am pulling it so the total whole of body will be moving on this okay on the wheels then it will be smoother right so that type of force that type of kinetic frictional force we call it as rolling friction okay so in while when it is rolling it will be smoother that means it is moving fast means whatever frictional force we have is very less okay so frictional force will be very less in case of rolling friction okay rolling frictional value will be very less okay so that is about all the different types of frictions which we have now suppose uh, when we are walking when we are walking so what should happen when we are hit when we are touching the surface with our feet so when we will be pushing our uh, we will be pushing the ground with with our foot backward direction then we will move forward direction if there is no friction we cannot even walk properly and whatever whatever i am writing over here if i can't hold the uh, writing pen properly then i cannot write over here okay and when i am holding the pen properly when i am touching the tip of the pen to this pad so there if it does not uh, have any frictional force between the writing pad and uh, my pen then i cannot uh, hold it properly right i cannot hold it properly i cannot write properly there also there some frictional force should exist between these two my pen and the pad surface right if it is smoothly uh, smoothly moving on it i cannot even write it okay certain frictional force should exist then only i can move that's the reason frictional force helps us for our day to day life also okay we will see them in advantages clearly okay so when we are pedaling our cycle suppose if we are moving on a cycle when we are pedaling our cycle so actually we will when we are pedaling only back tire will be moving right back wheel will be moving so that the front wheel which is at rest also moves with the help of it okay so the frictional force exists between the two surfaces when we are pedaling the frictional force between the two surfaces two tires will be in opposite direction when the when the cycle is in motion both the forces will be in the same direction okay so that i will be giving you clearly in the notes okay and advantages and disadvantages if we speak so so many advantages are there like uh, if we want to walk we need frictional force if we want to write we need to have frictional force okay even if you want to eat also we need to have frictional force because if we can't hold it our uh, suppose if we are uh, eating if we are eating a piece of cake if we want to hold it definitely there the frictional force should exist between that cake piece and our hand if we can't hold it if we are slipping out of our hand then we cannot right so like uh, some sweets will be there those are very smooth if we are holding if we are holding them it will slip out of our hands right so in such a case in such a case what happens sir? so we cannot even hold it properly right so there we cannot even eat so in the so many cases we have advantages right and of course even we have disadvantages also like in uh, this you might have observed in your home also fans after running so many days we will get certain sound out of them the bearings will go off and we will get certain sound so what is happening so due to continuous working so
so their frictional force is increasing okay whatever ball bearings are there those ball bearings are decreasing their their size and their what is happening the the whatever contact is there it is becoming rough so that we are getting sound out of it so due to that sound due to that effect so the fan may gets heated also right so all these problems we get when friction increases so whatever friction has to be there that moderately it has to be there friction should not be very high it should not be very low some people know for um, uh, what we call for show uh, um, showcase their home when they are having marbles in their home they will be making this polishing five times six times seven times they will make gloss polishing this that and all they'll make what happens due to that okay it looks very nice but if some water falls on it we will ultimately we will fall up okay so friction of course it may look smooth it may it may be stylish but when water is there if we can't see that water properly and we may fall up okay so that also comes under disadvantages of friction and when we are walking in a sand it is very difficult to work on it okay so if it is normal uh, ground we can work okay so if it is sand friction will be very high there also we cannot work right so friction should not be very high it should not be very low so when when surface is very smooth what do we do we can pour some sand on it we can work right so that is alternative friction we are increasing friction so that to make it uh, smoother to make to make our work properly right so those are advantages of friction and disadvantages of friction how do we come up with friction so how do we come up with friction so suppose some instrument is not working so what do we do in general also in home we will be applying some oil we will pour on that machine so that it works smoothly right so and other other cases like same fan example when i said so if it is not running smoothly so what do we do we will uh, change the ball bearings okay in cycle also ball bearings will be there if it is not running smoothly so we will change ball bearings and uh, the shine will be there if it is not if we feel difficult to ride so what do we do we will apply some oil in the chain and in the wheels also right so all these are alternatives of when friction increases what do we do when friction decreases what do we do right so those are all different things by applying ball bearings by applying grease oil right so by smoothening surface by hardening surface so all these are different methods to increase or decrease friction okay so we are maintaining the friction normally so that how much moderately we should have that much we are maintaining so that we can make our work properly right friction should not be high friction should not be low so that we can uh, do our work properly right so that is advantages disadvantages and uh, how to reduce friction right all those uh, we have seen